Welcome to the Photonics Next Summit. I'm Peter Freddy, Editor-in-Chief of Laser Focus World. I'm joined here today by Eric Eisenberg, Optics Development Manager for Radiant Vision Systems. Welcome, Eric. Hi, thanks for having me. Let's dive right in. Uh, Eric, I know your team at Radiant develops optical systems that evaluate the quality of visual elements produced by augmented and virtual reality devices. What are some of the things uh, you test to determine visual quality? Well, I mean, in, in very simple terms, really light and color. Uh, so depending on our customer requirements, uh, we look for things like pixel defects, uh, particle defects, uh, the, the sharpness of the focus of the display, the, the contrast, uh, image sticking, uh, many different aspects that can be potentially undesirable on a display that can be a defect from a manufacturing process that the customer would like to uh, eliminate from a, a finished product or correct for, for the system. Uh, and then in the realm of light and color, um, basically the, the intensity, how, how bright the display is, if that intensity is uniform, and then also that the color matches the expectations and has been set up correctly uh, per the requirements. So, you know, really anything that our, our customer's customer would see on an illuminated display that might ask make them question the quality of the device or potentially drive a return of the product. All right, great. What are some of the technical challenges associated with evaluating these AR, VR devices and displays? Yeah, so uh, more specifically, AR, VR measurement. Um, so these are really different displays than what we would be inspecting for a sort of traditional display measurement uh, technology. Uh, for our traditional display measurements where we're looking at, at things like computer monitors, tablets, phones, we typically are able to use effectively a photography lens um, paired with the camera to do that type of inspection. So something you might see on like an SLR camera. So with AR VR devices, this is really a, a totally different challenge um, for a few different reasons. And sort of the most obvious is that these displays are typically viewed very close to the eye. And so a traditional lens uh, just isn't designed to operate in that fashion. Um, these integrated systems have uh, a, perhaps size constraints that there may be like a headband that limits the ability for you to, to place the inspection system uh, within the device. Uh, and then also maybe arms for the glasses that also may mechanically interfere with the a traditional inspection system. Uh, then there's things like the virtual image distance. So when you're working with a, a physical display, it, it's well-defined how far away the display is from your imaging system and you can set up the focus to focus at that location. But with these types of devices, there's a, a virtual image that's generated by them at some finite distance, or maybe it's designed to be generated at infinite distance. And the system needs to be able to adequately focus on those systems to properly inspect the, the device. Um, <clears throat> and then these displays are typically made with uh, micro displays. So the, the, the integrated system has a micro display, some kind of relay optics that gets that, that light onto the, the eye. Uh, but we may inspect the, the components of the system and a, a micro display can be so small that uh, actually requires a, a microscope for inspection of, of that type of device. Um, and then really just the different types of parameters that the customer might be interested in, um, like the sharpness of the focus, which is just something that, that doesn't come into play with a, a traditional um, monitor or, or tablet inspection. All right, can you touch on some of the recent developments in AR VR devices that have you know, required you to rethink the design or application of optical test systems? Sure. Well, you know, really in the last 
couple years since um, really since the, the Quest 2 was released by Meta. Uh, there has just been a huge amount of interest from all of the top tier consumer electronic manufacturers in AR VR. I mean, none of them want to be left behind. You know, they they want to make sure that they have technology that they can bring to the market that will be competitive or, or hopefully even leapfrog their, their competitors. But the reality is, is that it, it really has been the Wild West in in our inspection regime. So there are standards that are being developed for this type of inspection, but they're really in their infancy. And the reality is, is that all of our customers' systems specifications vary pretty dramatically. And so there really is no one size fits all solution that works for, for everyone. And, and to, to that end, you know, there are the specifications that can vary are things like the, the field of view, um, the, the image quality expectations that they have for the system, the, the actual form factor of the device, uh, the resolution of the display that they're using. And so in order to rapidly be able to address these diverse requirements that are coming from our customers, we really found that there is a need for a more modular approach that can avoid these really long development cycles that we see for, for custom optics and custom solutions. And so, you know, to that end, one of the latest products that, that Radiant has released, we call the, the XRE lens. And this is one version of an invention that my team here came up with, where what we're doing is combining a traditional eyepiece that might be used in a telescope for, for astronomy that are that typically is the application with a, a macro lens that we already electronically control and utilize for our traditional inspection systems and by by bringing these two components together you you're actually able to create a lens that can do near to eye inspection and the real beauty of this is that the the astronomy market for these eyepieces is fairly mature and so there is a a very wide variety of eyepieces that we can obtain off the shelf very quickly that we can integrate into these types of systems that can meet a really wide range of different types of customer needs and, and requirements all right great what would you say are the most important aspects of designing an optical system you know, used to test these AR and VR displays? Yeah, this is this is important. Um, I would say the most important one is is practicality. Uh, you know, there there is a lot of research and science going into how these devices are meant to work, um, how the human will respond to the device, and it is very easy to overly complicate the inspection system to try to address all of these different aspects of what you may want to evaluate. So there is a trade between an inspection system that is practical and can be deployed for mass production and the inspection system that the scientists would really love to have in their laboratory, which just unfortunately isn't going to be very practical to bring into a factory environment, which where the expectation is that you may be inspecting hundreds or thousands of devices a day and have very little time for every device and every device that you want to inspect. Um, and I'd also say that, you know, having a deep understanding of, of what is going on in the industry and, and the needs of the customers so that you can prove that the system will meet the needs is really critical. Um, something that we've seen a lot lately is, is a requirement for variable focus. So one of the, the ways that the manufacturers are trying to improve the, the realism of the VR experience is to provide virtual variable focus fields. And so the devices are able to present images to the user that appear to be at different distances. 
And if the inspection system is to adequately characterize this, it needs to be able to change focus just like the human eye is able to adjust its focus. Uh, so, and this is just one aspect of the different types of um, areas that the customers are working on improving their devices. What do they need to do to make the experience more realistic for VR and more practical for AR? And so they're, they're pushing the technology in a lot of different directions, whether it be increasing the brightness of the devices, the variable focus that I mentioned, really ramping up the resolution, all of these things to try to make the experience more realistic for their users. All right. Considering the, the recent advances in you know, optics for AR, VR devices and for test systems, uh, what do you think is having the greatest influence on AR, VR design? Yeah, you know, this one is interesting because it's not necessarily a, a technology. It is more of a evolution of the industry. Um, the, the parallels of what we're seeing today between how the pocket PC was 15 years ago, which evolved into the smartphone, and what's happening right now in, in AR VR uh, is really uncanny, honestly. Um, so, you know, there are a lot of really good products out there that have a lot of really good technical specifications, um, but the, the functionality, the usability, the practicality of the product is something that all of them are still struggling with. And so what everyone is kind of waiting for is someone to come out with something that uh, is really accessible something that that my my mom will will be using and uh has you know a really widespread adoption which just hasn't really quite happened yet but it really feels like we may be on the cusp of, of that happening and frankly anyone could be the first to to come up with this product um but i i really believe that that 15 years from from today all of us will be utilizing some kind of device that that integrates some kind of augmented reality or virtual reality into our, our daily lives, just like the smartphones that we're all likely have in our pockets right now. Yep, yep. One more question for you. Uh, any advice for AR, VR manufacturers you know, considering a new system for visual inspection? Yeah, you know, it's it's really important that they, they understand the use case. You know, it, it, is this an R&D device where we're trying to characterize very in depth how the system performs? Or is this a device that we plan to send out to one of our contract manufacturers that will be doing some kind of OQC inspection on the devices? And the expectation is that it runs around the clock and inspects thousands of devices and in its lifetime, perhaps millions of devices. So, you know, it's really important that, that they aim for something that, that meets their needs with, with minimal cost and complexity. Um, you know, and, and just make sure that they're aware of, of how the technology is evolving. And, uh, you know, it, it's changing very, very quickly. And you don't want to get bogged down in some kind of long cycle inspection development project um, because your competition will leapfrog you in the end and basically, if you wait too long to release a product, even if the design is, is a really good one, uh, it's unfortunately someone else may have come up with something better in the meantime. So there, there is a real uh, need to, to get the product to market as quickly and practically as, as possible. All right, great. Great chat, very informative. Uh, thank you again, Eric, for joining us today. Of course, appreciate the time. <laughs>